Authorization boundaries help a system owner determine what is and what is not in scope for the protection of the system. It defines the boundaries of the system, that is, the things the system owner is responsible for and the things that are beyond their control. This is the area the system owner will apply security and privacy controls to to protect. So it's important to define boundaries efficiently and effectively for a system, and that's what we'll talk about in this topic. In this task, the authorization boundary is determined. Potential inputs include system design documentation, network diagrams, system stakeholder information, asset information, network and or enterprise architecture diagrams, and the organizational structure. Expected outputs from this task are a documented authorization boundary for the information system. Primary responsibility for this task is the authorizing official. The authorizing official is supported by the chief information officer, the system owner, the mission or business owner, the senior agency information security officer, the senior agency official for privacy, and the enterprise architect. This aligns with the system development lifecycle for new systems, initiation, concept requirements definition, and for existing systems, operations, and maintenance. There is no alignment for this task with the cybersecurity framework. Authorization boundaries establish a scope of protection for the information system. That is what the organization agrees to protect under its management controls or within the scope of its responsibilities. So in this task, we define the bounds of the system and where we're going to have controls implemented to protect the information and the information system. This is normally the span of control of the system owner, where they can influence change, where they can apply controls. Authorization boundaries are determined by authorizing officials with input from the system owner based on mission, management, and budgetary responsibilities. So the ultimate responsibility for this task is the authorizing official. They will validate that the authorization boundary and the authorization scope is correct. But that input from the business owner and the system owner is critical for the authorizing official to determine if the boundary is correct. The boundary should include things that are covered by the system owner and that are influenced by that system owner. It's hard to implement controls in areas that you don't control. A clear delineation of authorization boundaries is important for accountability and for security categorization, especially in systems where lower impact systems are connected to higher impact systems or when external providers are responsible for the operation or maintenance of a system. So we have to clearly define these boundaries. System boundaries can be impacted when a low impact system and a high impact system are included in the same boundary determination, in the same bounds of a system. In those cases, more than likely, the low impact system will get extra controls assigned to it because it's in the same scope as the high impact system and controls must be applied equally across these systems to make them secure. In this case, it may make sense to separate that into two different systems where the low impact system has less controls than the high impact system. Each system includes a set of elements or information resources organized to achieve one or more purposes and to support the organization's mission and its business processes. Each system element is implemented in a way that allows the organization to satisfy specified security and privacy requirements. System elements include human elements, technology or machine elements, and physical and environmental elements. So these are the elements that make up the system. That could be the people with their roles and responsibilities defined. It could be the technology, including servers, network gear, technologies, programs, those kind of things. And also the physical environmental elements, like the gates, the guns, the guards, the locks, the air conditioning, the cooling, humidity controls, those things all make up the system. And we put controls in place within the bounds of the system to provide protection. The term system is used to define the set of elements, system element interconnections, and the environment that is the focus of the RMF implementation. The system is included in a single authorization boundary to ensure accountability. So again, we draw lines around the system. 
we say everything within this box is the system we're talking about. And the system owner has the ability to implement controls on everything in that box. That's why it's so important to define a system boundary. It's easy for a system owner to make the boundary so small that there are so many RMF packages that have to be produced that it makes it overly complex. But it's also just as easy to make the bounds so big that it takes forever to get through that one RMF run. Getting the system boundary set correctly is as much of an art as it is a skill. For systems processing PII, or personally identifiable information, the privacy and security programs collaborate to develop a common understanding of the authorization boundaries. To conduct effective control assessments and select appropriate controls, privacy and security programs provide a clear and consistent understanding of what constitutes the authorization boundary. Understanding the authorization boundary and what will occur beyond it may influence controls selected and how they are implemented. So determining what is inside of that box, what's inside that control boundary, determines which controls will be implemented and how they will be implemented. And again, if we look at our example where we have a low impact system and a high impact system in the same bounds, it may be required that that low impact system implement controls that are beyond its risk rating, driving up security costs. Uh, and we also need to think about how the system that we're talking about connects to other systems because maybe there's protections provided by systems that it is connected to. Or maybe those are more risky systems that we're connected to. For systems either partially or wholly managed, maintained, or operated by external providers, an agreement clearly describing authorization boundaries ensures accountability. Privacy and security programs collaborate with providers to develop a common understanding of authorization boundaries. So when we're outsourcing systems, when we're relying on external providers to provide us systems, we do need to still stress that the authorization boundaries need to be set. And this should be documented in contract negotiations or statements of work. Formal agreements with external providers, including contracts, may be used to delineate what constitutes authorization boundaries. Understanding such boundaries facilitates the selection of appropriate controls to manage supply chain risk. In this topic, we talked about a number of things and references for this topic include Special Publication 818, 839, 847, 864, 800, 160, Volume 1, and the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. In closing, in this module, we discussed Task P11, its inputs and outputs, roles and responsibility, the SDLC lifecycle alignment, authorization scope, boundary delineation, system elements, a system defined, what we do with PII systems, controls and boundaries, external providers, and of course references. If any of this looks unfamiliar to you, I recommend you go back and review this video again, and we'll see you in the next